Okay, so we'll take a look. I want to just use you as a guinea pig with the health issues, but some of you weren't here on Tuesday. Okay, on Tuesday, we did a little bit about patterns, and I used numerology. I don't know if you saw the video. I obviously was not in my greatest state. I was so out of it. I wanted to like delete the videos because I was like, this is not me, but that's just the reality. <laughs> you were probably bored to death as you you listened to me. But um, I want to review that just a little, but I also want to use your example. So this is a book. It's called Signs and Symbols. I have a lot of books on symbology um, because I like to know what symbols mean from the subconscious or from the collective unconscious perspective. If, even if you don't, but if you believe in multiple lifetimes, then the idea would be that you've collected um, knowledge of certain symbols or knowledge of certain places and that's sort of stored in your energy body. So if you appear to go visit, let's say, Italy, and all of a sudden you're like, oh my god, I feel like I've been here before. Or if you've met someone and you're like, this person I know. Um, or if you just know a meaning of a symbol. There are a lot of times people get tattoos and they don't really know why. And I'll ask people, why did you pick that tattoo? Oh my god, I was so drawn to it. And they don't know the symbol. So Carolyn Mays, who I've mentioned before, I don't know which one of her books, was one of her early books, she tells a story about being outside of a 7-Eleven and these kids were just hanging out and they had like these tribal tattoos and she goes up to them and she's like this short, feisty woman. I highly recommend her. If you like my style, you'll love her style. Because she's just in your face, no, you know, not, holds nothing back. She's just amazing. So she goes up to these kids and, and she's talking to them about, you know, life and what are they, you know, they're bitching about something. And she goes, do you guys know what those tattoos are? And she starts to teach them about the tribe. The tribe is related to the first chakra. What we do is... We form our ideals, we form our, our, our thoughts, we form our subconscious from the tribe. In my language, it's primarily origin story from egg and sperm. And then it's continued with the culture, the religion, the family, our siblings, our education, etc. And after she told them about what these tribal tattoos meant and what this all meant, they were like, oh my God, we want more. So we're oftentimes attracted to things or we're, you know, standing up for something or we have something, but we don't know why. So these simple books are really good ideas to have. And when I teach the Akashic Records, the first thing I teach is for students to have what I call a symbol dictionary, to create a symbol dictionary. So that when you have a symbol that you think of, or you see, or it shows up, you know what it means to you. Now do not place a symbol meaning onto your client. Just like with an illness, just like when I was measuring um, Marsha the other day, and I'm sorry that I wasn't on my greatest, you know, sort of, that day, but normally that would be a whole session. How many pounds overweight do you think you are? When did you gain them? It's representative of weight that you're missing, whether it's a family member, whether, like I said, that client who is missing her scuba gear. That's why we hold certain things. So we want the client to answer so that the client is empowered. We're not telling the client. Now, don't get me wrong. I will have clients, and I'll be like, oh, you know that the significance of that symbol is this, this, and this. It may not resonate with the client. That's fine. But there are books for you to gather information because these are symbols that have been passed on, 
and they have actual significance in the psyche, and most people might have a similar reason for believing what a symbol means. So I open today to spirals and circles. And so I just kind of want to give a quick, sort of explain the numerology a little bit better in a form of a spiral and a circle. First of all, there are no straight lines in nature. Nothing in nature is linear. Linear is for which world? Right, but which world uses linearity? The earthly world. Okay, the earth. Good morning. It is only in the earthly realm, this, that linearity exists. We know linearity as time. We live and die by the clock. That is how human beings function. We live and die by the clock. There are two types of time. Okay, do you remember when I told you about Kali? What did I tell you that it meant? Remember I put Kala? What is Kala? Kala is time. And Kali is the goddess of what? Of death and destruction. Death and time are the same. It is the moment we are born, we are already dying. So we have to have this understand that we, as human beings, are being sort of led by a clock. There was this Justin Timberlake movie where they had how many minutes or hours left and they would steal and buy time and stuff like that. That's us. That's what we do. The yogis understood that we got more time if we controlled our breath. So that's why in the yogic philosophy, they hold their breath or they control the breathing. We know in different animals that certain animals breathe very shallow, they die very quickly. Whereas others have very long breaths and they have longer lifespans. Okay, so obviously the breath and time are related. And what brain is that? The reptilian brain. Because the reptilian brain is related to fight and flight. And breath and digestion and sex are linked to that brain. So if you're in a constant fight or flight mode, you're going to be breathing faster. You're going to be using a sympathetic nervous system. You're always going to be agitated, and you're going to drop dead at a younger age. Okay? So we are in this realm, in the earth. We are held to time. There is no time outside of this space. Okay? So, there's two types of time. There's Kronos and there's Kairos. Kronos is actual time. Your clock. Kairos is opportune time. What does that mean? The opportune time. Because an opportunity to change or do something. Absolutely. Absolutely. And this is the link to the numerology. Things are going to come. Remember the fat cow and the skinny cow? 
Your skinny cows are coming. And your fat cows are coming. That's just the way it is. You, like in those pictures of those spirals, have a time. I don't have a pineapple, but if I did, everyone see a pineapple? If you've ever seen a pineapple, you see it has like those little crosses. If you follow those little crosses, they connect and they make a spiral. Seashells make a spiral. These are called the Fibonacci numbers. Fibonacci realized that there was a sequence in nature. There is no straight line. You are not getting here to there as you planned it. Too bad Aniela isn't here right now. She wants to get this degree and this degree by the time she's 21. And it ain't gonna look like this. It ain't. It might look like this. That's probably what it's gonna look like. We do not have linear time in our soul and in our life. We only have linear time by the clock we live by. So this is a problem for people who feel that they are behind. This is a problem for people who think that they're too old, or they're too young, or they're not ready or it's wrong to date someone older or younger, or who the hell should be a millionaire by 12? Because your soul is on Kairos, and your body is on Kronos. So this creates an issue. It especially creates an issue when life sucks. When life is going good, bring it on. But then all of a sudden, life sucks. And you're pissed. And you're like, what the hell? This is not an opportune time for this to happen to me. Not a good time for me to get cancer, for you to get a tumor on your pituitary. Not a good time for the teacher to drop dead right one month before I'm supposed to graduate. Not a good time for my husband to walk out because I don't have a job. Not a good time. And the universe doesn't give a rat's ass. <laughs> it doesn't give a shit. It wasn't an opportune time for that pineapple to be sliced right in the middle and interrupt its curvature. For you to eat it. But we did it anyway. It wasn't an opportune time for the ocean, for the tide to be harsh, and for all the little fragments of the shells to be all over the place. But that's what happened. That's just life. You are going to abide by Kronos. You live and die by the clock. And the clock doesn't move the way you want it to. But numerology patterns is an information that we can use to prepare, to help a client prepare. This is stuff you could do before the client even gets there. Because all you need is their birthday. So I want to just, in a quick synopsis, reiterate, because I wasn't super clear, so that you understand. Every thing, single thing has a pattern of one to nine. And on and on and on. When I tell you 
moment of conception, pregnancy, birth, and zero to seven, I've told you before it's usually zero to nine because seven starts the drama and goes to nine. Why do I say zero to seven or zero to nine? What did I just say? Let's use critical thinking. Because of the pattern. If you were born here, forget origin, pregnancy, and birth. If this is your first year of life and your trauma has to show up by here, you have to have your story somewhere in those nine years. Usually by seven, but sometimes you don't know the details or an ending or a finality by nine. So you can say zero to seven or zero to nine. It is your first cycle of your pineapple. And then what's gonna happen? Your year is at nine, and then you're going to have another. And then you're gonna have another nine. And then you're gonna have another nine. And then you're gonna have another nine. And your life is going to look like this. Have you ever heard of the labyrinth? Can you Google in there, I mean, look in there in the index, see if there's labyrinth? A labyrinth is, it comes from a, um, a famous myth of the labyrinth and the minotaur. It's a Greek myth where there was a minotaur in the middle of the labyrinth that kept eating anybody that went into the labyrinth. They were get eaten alive by the minotaur. And there was a woman who wanted to help Theseus not get eaten. And her father was the king, King Minos. And he said, anybody that can get there, kill the minotaur, and come out, will get the kingdom, or whatever he promised them. So she wanted to help him. And she gave him a string, a red string. She held it. He went into the labyrinth, defeated the minotaur, had the string, and was able to get out. Ariadna was her name. He ended up screwing her over. But she promised, he promised he'd marry her, and he didn't. Um, and he went off. But that's another thing. So if we have a red string, if we have... Did I give up? Give yeah, it back? Give it back. Okay. <laughs> if we have a string, then we can defeat the minotaur. <laughs> In the story, that minotaur is your story. It's the story you're building your life on. So you can see it from head to toe, or you can see it graveling. That's why when I talk about the seven gates, that's why when I talk about dying and Inanna going down the layers, you're actually unraveling like a sweater. You're pulling the thread. Do you see the visual? You are pulling the client's thread so that their entire narrative can be destroyed. And then you get to the minotaur, which is the beast, which is the shadow, which is your fofo, which is what you're afraid everyone's going to find out, that you're not a warrior, that you're worthless. And then you can be, if you choose, reborn on a new story. But you first have to understand why things happen, or in a pattern in which they happen, so that you are not caught off guard. Most of the issues that most people have is that they are caught off guard. This does not mean that the pain is going to be easier. I knew that my divorce was coming because of patterns, not because of any other reason. I tried telling myself, no, 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 no. I tried everything. This is not going to happen. 
but the pattern indicated it was coming. That's just the way it sucked. So it doesn't mean that you're protected from anything because you know these things. It does not mean that you can avoid certain things, but you can be aware. You can change your mindset, maybe save some money, maybe go back to school, maybe invest in Kleenex, I don't know. But you want to have, not all of us, a lot of people come and say, I don't want to know anything. Don't tell me anything. And that's okay too. There are people that prefer to be that way. So what happens with the cycle is that every nine years, you have an ending. So write this down. Number one is a birth. A birth of something. You open your business today, that becomes for that baby a year one. Doesn't matter if you're in a year six. For that baby, that's a year one. There is a birth. A year two has to do with partnership, companionship. Doubling a size, for instance. If we're talking about your business, maybe your business grows doubly. Maybe you get a business partner. A year three is change. Something changes. It must change. These are metaphysical laws that I will not go into today. But there is a law called the law of octaves that I will explain to you one day, that will explain absolutely everything to you, why you change or why you don't change. It is easy, but it is difficult all in one. Year four is work. The number four is a square. The square has a meaning of death in Asian cultures. And when you're building something, it has to be even on all four sides. There's a lot of work associated with it. So whether you're talking about a business or whether you're talking about the energy in your life, it's going to be related to hard work. This is not going to be an easy year. Five is fun. Let me explain metaphysically a quick reason why. The four are the four elements. Earth, air, fire, and water. Anyone see the five elements movie? The fifth element with Bruce Willis? That's what this is on. What happened in the movie? She had the four elements and she stood in the middle and then she became the spirit or whatever it was that she was going to. Same thing. In the four year, you are working with solely the elements of the earth. Therefore, you're working with time. And time is no one's friend. So it is a hard year because you're against the clock. But in the five year, you add Kairos, which is the spirit in whatever form you think that looks like. I am not telling you. And then things start to flow, so it's a year of fun, it's a year of movement. All the elements now got what? Animated. A body is just a body, without the spirit, it's just bones. Same concept. The six is a year of work. The six is related to working the fields. In mythology, we talk about land that is like, not barren, but uh, ready to be put crops on it. How do you call that? What was that? Like fertile land, but there, it's, there's nothing on it. Like after you get the... It's barren. Okay, but isn't barren, this, I always have confusion with this. Is it barren? Isn't barren mean it can't give crops? Or it's prepped for cropping? 
It's prep. That's a good point. Okay, so this yeah. is a year where you're prepping for growth. So it's also a work year because whatever you've gotten, that you got fun from a fifth year, now you're starting the work again. You've gotten your crops, and again, crops is a metaphor. It could be anything, studies, boyfriend, whatever. And now you're starting to prep, so there's some work there. A seven year is a solitary year. A seven year is a year of waiting, a year of doing inner work, a year where you don't necessarily see results, but things are moving. So think of the crops. You put the seeds and you wait. That's all they do, they wait. And then in an eight year, cha-ching, you get, you get what, what you grew. Eight years is a year of power, personal power and financial power. And then at year nine, you have to let go of something, surrender something, kill something, because what do you need to do in order to birth something? You need to what? You need to kill something off so that you can start over. And here you start new and it's another birth. And again and again and again. This is Kairos. This is opportune time. It's coming whether you want it or you don't. In marriage, we have something called the seven year itch. I like to call it the seven year bitch. It seems to fuck me up all the time. So it's way more than an itch, okay? So therefore, in a seven, that is a year of solitary. It's a year where you feel alone. So marriages at 7, 14, 21, 28, they have crisis. The people tend to pull apart. I, we can't find our footing. We're having trouble because their marriage started here. And at 7, they have to go inward alone. And it's the antithesis of marriage. You don't know if you're going to come out alive. And two years later, after the divorce was filed, it's dead. Or you found yourself anew. Lucky those that can. And like this, all of the cycles that we live. So you have an energy that you were born into. You take your month plus your day, plus your year. That gives you one number. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Does everybody know that number? Okay, hey, got do it. Add up your birthday. Add it all up. I'm three plus one, plus four, plus one, plus nine, plus seven, plus three. And my number is a one. That number is the energy of your life. So I'm going to have a lot of births, meaning I'm going to have a lot of deaths. I'm going to have a lot of new beginnings. I might have loneliness. I'm also a leader. All the meaning of a number one. That is the energy that you carry with you for life. Do you need help? Yeah, mine is 114. So because it's April. Your birthday is, is, what's your birthday? January 1st. Your what? Okay, 8. What's yours? August 8th. Yeah. What's yours? Yeah. What day? August 3 plus oh. 1 plus what year? 1979. You're a 7. 3 plus 4 is 7. Okay. No, that's not this year. It's the year you're born. Your birth year. March, I was born. Plus one plus four 
plus one plus nine plus seven plus three. And if it turns out to be ten, one plus zero is one. This is called your life path. 